What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you a look at the next five game reviews that I have lined up, which is a video I like to make every couple months just to kind of keep people up to date on what I'm doing and what they've got to look forward to. That said, currently I'm working my way through a game called Troubleshooter Abandoned Children, and once that review is done, then I'll start working on these next five. Another thing to keep in mind is that these videos, or these reviews, are usually for older games, and I will of course cover anything newly released in between. That said, between now and like the middle of November, really the only thing new releasing that I'm definitely checking out is Solstice, which is launching in just a few days. But between those two things, Troubleshooter and Solstice, you'll likely start seeing these reviews in October, which is a pretty wide open month for me. But to actually kick the list off and get to it, for our number one spot, we have Icewind Dale 2. I have previously reviewed Icewind Dale, so naturally I need to cover the sequel. This is a game that you can really only find on GOG, and unlike a lot of the other Infinity Engine games, there has been no Enhanced Edition for Icewind Dale 2. From what I understand, something about Lost Source Code making it basically a hassle without just outright remaking the thing. And because of that, this is a game I'll have to pick up on, GOG of course, but they're pretty great at getting old games from anyway as they put a lot of effort into making sure they run. Unlike, say, Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale tends to focus much more on the combat of D&D and the system, which brings us to another interesting point, which is that Icewind Dale 2 actually uses D&D 3rd edition, whereas most of these other games in the Infinity Engine series used AD&D or 2.5. So it'll be fun to play with 3rd edition, which I have not played the base version of 3rd edition in quite some time. So it'll be fun to mess around with that. But that brings us to the second game on our list, and that is none other than Neverwinter Nights 2. This is a game people have been asking me for a lot as I reviewed Neverwinter Nights previously as well. Now Icewind Dale 2, and specifically Mask of the Betrayer, are games that are talked about very, very highly, and it's probably, at this point, one of the more glaring holes in my gaming knowledge, as I haven't really messed around with it. So I'm very much so looking forward to checking out Neverwinter Nights 2, which I, again, will have to go through GOG to actually get. But still, with how much people praise Mask of the Betrayer specifically, and how much people have requested me to cover this one, and my own lack of knowledge about it has me very excited to jump into this one. Also, it's my understanding you can play as a yon in this particular game, which I'm actually pretty excited for. Normally you don't get to play yon in games outside of just actually, you know, in the TTRPG. That, of course, brings us to our third game on the list, and that is none other than Wasteland 2. So I haven't reviewed Wasteland 2. I have messed around with it a tiny bit, which might surprise people because I covered Wasteland 3 extensively. I wrote many guides for it, actually, and contributed to many more. But nonetheless, I have not reviewed Wasteland 2, and I would frankly just like to check it out and see how much different it is from Wasteland 3. The original Wasteland is actually more of a text-based adventure that saw a remaster, actually, so you can go play that one even if you want, but I'll probably give that one a pass and stick to just Wasteland 2. But honestly, after the great time I had with Wasteland 3, I'm very much so looking forward to doubling back and taking a look at this one, but something that I've heard about this game in particular is that it's quite a bit more difficult than, say, 3 is, and given how very well received 3 actually was, I'm very curious to see the systems in 2 and kind of how they iterated and changed upon them for 3. So that particular review will likely have a sort of, not exactly retrospective, but comparative feel to it where I'm talking about the changes they then went on to make. But that brings us to number 4 on the list, and that is none other than Gothic 1. Now, Gothic, the series, is probably the single most requested series for me to cover on the channel. It's made by Piranha Bytes, who made the Elix series that I have covered for reviews previously, and I haven't gotten around to reviewing Gothic specifically, but again, people ask me for it all the time, so I figured we'd double back and actually check it out. As it seems to be a bit of a cult classic with a lot of uh, mixed feelings one way or another, Piranha Bytes is known for a very particular style of game, and Gothic is what a lot of people think of when they think Piranha Bytes, so I'm excited to check it out because I enjoyed Elix quite a bit, and I want to kind of jump in and check out their roots, so to speak, before they moved on. And more specifically, it's my understanding they're going to be making a remake of Gothic, and I'd like to check out the series before that remake gets made, so I can, of course, have some knowledge of the original series before checking out the new one. Now, it won't be anytime soon, but I'll likely check out their Risen series as well, as people often ask me to check that series out 
also. But all of that said, we find ourselves at our last title, and this is going to be a rare re-review of Cyberpunk 2077. We're going to be re-reviewing this for a few reasons overall, but probably two major ones. The first one being that the game has seen major overhauls that I think warrant a re-review by themselves. But secondly, my initial review of Cyberpunk 2077 is something I did like right when the channel was about to take off, like a few months prior to uh, things actually starting to step up. And my video quality and style has changed a lot since then. So that combined with the extensive changes to the game that have actually been made, I would like to give it a re-review before their DLC that was recently announced launches, so I can check that out as well. All five of these games out of the way and talked about will actually have completely cleared off the backlog of games that I have been wanting to try out for years, which has been a big focus of mine this year. And a lot of the reviews you've seen from me this year, if you've been a regular watcher, have been games that I have just not gotten around to for one reason or another. For instance, I only started doing YouTube full-time this past year, so this has been my first full year on YouTube doing this. So with all of the time working at home, I've had an excuse for work actually now to go back and check out all of these games. But that actually pretty much clears out my backlog of games that I wanted to get around to. So after these five get done, again, probably around end of October, give or take, we'll likely be moving on to some other games that I want to try out but are not specifically on my backlog, starting with probably some Warhammer 40k games that I mentioned previously wanting to check out, but I'll save the specifics of that for the next version of this exact video. But that's what we've got to look forward to in the immediate future. Some games I'm very excited to check out. I've been reviewing and checking out so much other stuff. I've not been playing a ton of proper CRPGs, so it'll be fun to get back to uh, Icewind Dale 2 and Neverwinter Nights 2 and just cover some CRPGs I haven't covered already. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.